Now, would you pay extra for more policing in your area? That is precisely what the Crime Commissioner for Surrey wants people to do after cutbacks to the police force there. And other parts of England and Wales may try to follow suit. Our Deputy Political Editor, Chris Shipp, has obtained details of the plan. The sign says, making Surrey safer, but you can barely read it. There are no police officers at this station, just empty desks. It's one of two dozen closed by Surrey police to make ends meet, but... There's no money. The Police and Crime Commissioner here says there's nothing left to cut, and he's proposing, hold your breath, a 25% hike in the police part of the council tax to plug the hole in the force's finances. Well, I'm considering holding a referendum the cupboard is bare, we've sold off your police stations, you're going to have to wait ages for police to come, even in the richest place in the country. I cannot now guarantee that we can maintain the response teams that we used to do. Government simply must take it seriously and do something about the funding cuts. 21 police stations and counters have closed in Surrey. The Crime Commissioner is proposing a £52 increase for every household to wipe out the force's deficit. In South Wales, Gwent Police is facing a £50 million deficit by 2019 and is considering a £33 rise in council tax. West Midlands has just announced 27 police stations are to shut. So too in Merseyside, they're planning 20 closures. And Avon and Somerset Force admits it's facing a challenging situation and won't rule out a similar referendum on hiking council tax. If the green light is given for this referendum, it would happen on the same day as the general election next year. So the people of True Blue Surrey will have two ballot papers, one asking them to re-elect their Conservative Member of Parliament, the other asking them for £50 extra a year in council tax because the local police force has run out of money. Labour today set out plans for the first time for more cuts to police budgets, £250 million worth, but claimed it would use the money to protect frontline police officers. The Shadow Home Secretary thinks she can save £50 million by axing police and crime commissioners and £170 million by buying kit and equipment more efficiently. We always argue that the police could sustain savings of around 12% over the course of this parliament rather than the 20% that the government went for. And that's so meant they've lost, well, that's meant they've lost around 16,000 police officers already. But they've never done the work to actually make it possible to get better value for money. Police cuts have not been getting the same political focus as the NHS and the economy. But whoever wins the election, it's clear there are more cuts to come. So where is their place in the political debate in the run-up to the next election then, Chris? Well, Julie, I think there's some in the criminal justice system um, who rather worry that these police cuts are going by largely unnoticed. Now, the NHS, the economy, has been high up the political agenda for all sorts of valid reasons. But this police and crime commissioner we spoke to today said that his views are shared by his counterparts in other parts of the country. They're just not prepared to go public with them yet. Now, into this, you've had Labour stepping today saying that these are the results of what they call their zero-based review. To you and I, it's just how they examine how government is spending its money. They say they will cut differently. I think it's too difficult uh, to tell from these limited set of figures whether that would be the case. But there is underlying all this a much bigger uh, plan, a proposal to merge the 43 uh, police forces of England and Wales into just one, that would save something like uh, £2 billion. And it was the view of the Crime Commissioner that we spoke to today. You need to do something on that scale if you're going to offset the cuts that we had and the cuts which are coming. OK, Chris, thank you very much indeed. President Obama has, in effect, sacked his...